Oh, that memory card is nearly full. I've got 23 minutes left. That's interesting. Usually I have so much, like hours and hours of time left. I feel the pressure now. 23 minutes. It's 22 now. My goodness. Crazy. I'm in a very good mood. It is Sunday. I'm starting my three-day work week again, which works really well for me. I got a lot of housework done there. Some problem in the system that needs my attention and I replaced a few batteries, two batteries and two MacBooks in fact, very nice, made a little time-lapse video there for those batteries, very very cool thing to do, I, I like working with my hands every once in a while when it's not working with my hands on some kind of computer thing, so it's nice to do things that are not directly software related if you know what I mean so it's, uh, it's difficult to explain but if you imagine playing with Lego blocks that's something different than having virtual Lego blocks in some kind of interface that you move around with the mouse while staring at a monitor it's just something different so I like that I like the combination of, of both these things it's important for spatial awareness and all that which is why little kids like playing with their blocks and put them in those you know cubes with different cutouts on the lids you know, one of those types of things yeah so very important for us grown-ups to do these things as well in a very you know 3d space which is why about last year i think last year year and a half ago julia and i went to the aventura mall which is a few miles up the road from us a big shopping center in which they have a Lego store and I've not had Lego in a while but I did I did invest a hundred something dollars into a massive box and it's not that I'm a, a, an avid Lego collector but I haven't had the chance to play with that in over 30 years and it was uh, it's weird when when I was able to travel again after my cancer operation it's one of those things that I thought I want to I want to do again it's, it was a really weird period there, once, once I was through all this many of my childhood memories came back and I wanted to relive some of that so playing with my Commodore 64 type computer and, and Lego was another thing I, I suppose it, I'm not entirely sure what that's related to but I thought maybe it's a sense of calm and comfort and safeness and that is what I wanted to reconnect with it was on, on various other levels too so it was uh, uh, salty licorice is something I used to eat as a child because we had it due to our Dutch connection salty licorice is, is, is ubiquitous in, in the Netherlands and some Scandinavian countries but not at all over here or in Germany so it was kind of an exotic thing to have it's an exotic taste to acquire and I don't know I liked it my dad used to like really salty licorice and when I tried it I thought oh my god this is amazing and no one else liked it so my mom didn't like it none of my classmates liked it when I brought some into school it was just not for everyone not even for all Dutch people you know so it's not that all Dutch people like that it's not the case it's it's a very unique taste and I don't know it's just one of those I don't know why this springs into my mind right now but I just I just had that had that thought and um, maybe it's related to a video game I've just tried uh, so after finishing those um, finishing up the battery replacements in the laptops in preparation for the nano rider nano rhino writing session that my wife and I want to embark on in November I thought I'll try this new video game that I, that I, there's two video games I've tried and one of them was terrible for me, I didn't like that at all and the other one was surprisingly amazing and I wanted to tell you more about that sort of experience that I've made there, so very, very interesting, they, they both cost similar amounts of money, one is No Man's Sky which has been out since 2016, it's a big big hoo-ha about when it was released, the features that they had promised hadn't quite been implemented and all that and so it had a lot of press over the years but the team stuck with it and they kept making improvements to the game and they kept releasing new things so very nice of them to do that and they finally I think from what I read they've turned that game around into the game that they initially wanted to make they should have maybe released that in early access and didn't do it 
So anyway, long story short, I heard a lot about it and I thought it would be maybe a worthy successor for our Subnautica Saturday stream. So No Man's Sky is about exploring a virtual galaxy and all the planets and all the all the items that you find on those planets are procedurally generated so they're not hand handcrafted the computer does all that by a formula that's a very interesting approach and that, that goes for all the items that you come across in the several quintillion stars that you can explore i don't really know if the, the i don't think the story missions are based on that but it's it's a very interesting idea it's a very very nice approach to do it that way and an interesting experiment and I read a lot about it and I thought hey that's maybe you know it was on sale that game for about used usually is sixty dollars and it was on sale for about twenty two and I thought ah maybe this is a maybe I should do it I was hesitating it's so very much hesitating of uh, shall I do it shall I not do it um, missed the sale on GOG for about two weeks then it was on sale at Steam for the same deal and I bit literally a few days ago before the sale was over and it was I thought I'd secure the deal and see what the game is all about and uh, left it for a couple of days and Julie and I had a look at it and played it for literally two hours and it was a terrible experience <laughs> it's it's an interesting one because we knew when we played it there must be more to this game than the frustration and terribly designed interface and and the constant dying than we currently experience there has to be more to it i mean it's it's about space exploration so the first step of that is that you need to fix your spaceship and you need to get off the planet and you need to just do relatively simple things and usually games do this by telling you how the menu works and what you need to do and introduce you to the things like craft this from blueprint x and y so in that way it's very similar it's a very similar approach to what we have in subnautica but the game does such an awful job at explaining to you what it wants you to do so instead you just press random buttons none of them work and then there's of course there's a little timer function there in the background that says that if you don't fix that then you run out of oxygen or heat exposure is too big or there was something like that that'll eventually kill you and it it was just the whole interface the whole menu is just so awful that it was really Im impossible to pick it up it's not not anything you do intuitively and it's just it's just weird and uh, yeah so we spent so many hours well what felt like so many hours it was only three hours in total two hours playing it on that day another hour the next day that I that I tried to uh, once we had worked out the basics we had to do this super awful mission which means you have to just walk forward essentially 20 minutes in real time literally in real life 20 minutes walk into that direction to pick up some thing that you have to put into your spaceship so that it works so you have to walk 20 minutes back and it's literally there's nothing that happens on that journey so it's an awful awful starter experience there um yes yeah, so that was no man's sky and it was really not something i can recommend i mean eventually i did get it i, I did understand what the game wanted me to do uh, but it was just getting there uh, unbelievable so it's a very wasted chance there for the for the developers who already had a hugely bad press and from what i read that starter experience how the game begins that has been overhauled in the latest updates so i shudder to think what the previous version would have looked like so yeah so it's interesting the, some people really like it it's a very mixed review so some people really find it awesome i guess once you get into it once you invest all the time into it you do get a payoff at one point but i was thinking how many hours do you have to push through the pain barrier to to arrive at a point where you can say i can now understand what the game is about you know it's it's crazy i, I really don't know what the developers expect you to do there but hey it, it led me to another idea like like I do I'm an ideas man a doer and ideas man much not much of a thinker I don't think about ideas either they just come and then I often slash never do anything with it so it uh, this idea uh, it reminded me a little bit of uh, the write-up that I did for my first 24 hours with unity 
Unity suffers from that as well. Unity, the game development engine, is, is a terrible starter experience. It's not anything that is intuitive, fun to use, welcomes you into this thing. It's completely terrible. And what is interesting is that so many people are using it in spite of that. And, and many people want to get into it and use it. And it's, there's a similarity there that you, as a software developer, it doesn't matter what it is that you want your people to use your tool for, you have to teach them how to use it. And you, there, are very, there are various ways in how to do that, and uh, I think it's an art form. The, 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 you never get a second chance to make a first impression. That's the, that's the saying, isn't it? And once you've ruined it, you, you can't go back from that. And with a new thing that you want people to use, doesn't matter if it's a video game, even a book, how to read it, a, a kind of intricate 3D software, even a website, something simple, or an iPhone app or whatnot. You gotta introduce people to what it's about, how to use it, and get comfortable with it, and then it's down to doing this thing what you want it to do and to make it deliver what you want it to deliver. And I think many people overlook that. I think uh, many developers, they're so hooked up in making sure the delivery process can happen in some form. And they're working on this for like five years. And for them, it's totally obvious of how to do anything and everything. But for people who see this for the first time, they have no idea what your mad scientist vision is actually about. And I think there's an opportunity there for, for literally a service, some kind of a company that you can say, hey, this is it's not a game testing service as such, because these people exist as well, game testing or software testing, in which you say, before launch, I have this project here, and this is what it does, and this is my vision summed up in like three, four sentences, and this is how I want to present this to the world. I want to be, I want this to be successful, I need this to be successful. And when people see this for the first time, they give it maybe half an hour, an hour to try it out. But this is really my time frame in which I need to deliver what this thing can do. And I need to, I need to have the user make a decision as to do they like it, can they use it or not. Because that's really what it's all about. I mean, this this famous window of of the return policy at Steam and Epic is literally: you can play this game for two hours, and if you below that, you can ask for a refund. If you're above that, then the refund is it's not going to get processed, so you can't get a refund. But that's a very arbitrary kind of time window. I like it though, because it is in those first two hours that you, as a user need to be able to make a decision, is this for me or not? And if you come to the conclusion it is not, then, you know, don't buy the software. That's what trial versions do. Seven day, 14 day, one month trial versions, they're there for that purpose because two hours is ridiculous. That's, that's totally ridiculous, especially for creative software. There has to be a way for us to explore it in various circumstances and a month goes by like that. It's, it's literally, even that is sometimes ridiculous. But nevertheless, so my idea is then to say, you give us the software, and a few of us play through it, play, I mean that in a very loose way, it could be a game, could be a mobile application, could be an intricate whatever software. We test the user experience and we tell you what ordinary humans think about it and where they get stuck. I bet company would, companies would pay a lot of money for that because it's not easy for them to get that experience. Once you've had it, once you've pushed through it, all your developers, they know how to use it eventually. They may not like it, but this first time user experience, people only ever get this for the, when they use something for the first time. If they're using it for the second or third time, they already know what's, what to expect. So that's not a valid experience. So I think that's, a, that's an interesting way of, of building something in which people can say, hey, I need that first time use case experience here and I need for people to to tell me what is the first user experience because we need to get that right. We can't screw this up because once people dislike your software, they're not going to look at it again and they're not going to buy it. They're not going to, you know, they're going to ask for a refund. That's that's not good for business. You got to you got to be able to capture the person who you want to capture and you got to really take them by the hand and say, "Hey, this is how you use my software." 
doesn't matter if it's a game or not or if it's a, if it's something else but you got to really set the ground rules and tell them how it works if you say instead like nomad sky great example here's a shitty designed random crap interface with 400 million options one for every star in the galaxy you work it out we're not going to tell you anything that's really not a good experience you know unity great example here's a gray interface it does everything have fun there's probably a youtube video on there not entirely sure but somebody will have probably made one so really now give us the money for the pro plan because hey it's gonna make you rich man and you see that you see the results unity is the thing it's it's awesome and you go yeah um i have no idea how to even how to even begin here that studio awesome example let's not write documentation it's also super intuitive really is it because i all i see is like 400 billion tabs and buttons and 50 variations of a user experience here i can probably customize everything but seriously where do i begin well that's the lesson strip ah yes that hasn't been updated in what 12 years now awesome so yeah this is not a good first time user experience nothing is that requires you to put in a hefty amount of a steep learning curve to to get anything done that's terrible so i say maybe there's an opportunity in there don't know so then an, an example for the opposite is the other game i tried literally this morning uh, by a developer who's been developing this game for seven years it's a game called manifold garden and developers William Chur, I believe that is how you pronounce his name, just launched two days ago on Epic, on the Epic Store. And Apple Arcade ports for Xbox and PlayStation are in the making. And that is a, a very minimalist perspective game that really messes with your mind and you, you kind of messes with perspective. And minimal introductions, but you get it and I, that's my point that's that's a really well done first case user experience on manifold garden you pick up the game you don't know really what it's about you walk around you can walk onto a wall and change the perspective and keep walking on the wall you pick up cubes you solve puzzles that's the intro and you get it and now it's on to the puzzles now it's on to the delivering of the service which is the the fun and excitement of, of puzzle solving i guess so that's really well done. That's really well thought of. And it isn't done with dialogues or with, with any words. You know, it's literally showing you what you need to press, when you need to press it, and you do it and it grows on you. You get it. And I think those are the kind of first time user experiences. They're very different things, of course. You know, one is a game made by one guy over seven years and the other is a game that's aiming to rebuild the universe that we can now explore yeah you're not god by the way you can't do that no matter how hard you try hello games so yes very very terrible first use experience so hey maybe there's maybe there's a business idea in there maybe you get funding let's get kickstarter sorted let's get like billions of dollars to start that and then and then not tell anyone how to use our service